Hi, welcome to another video. So, Google has just launched Gemini 3.0 Flash. Well, there are official blog posts yet to come, but it is now available on some platforms, and it is now available on Zenmux, which is like Open Router as well. So, I was able to test it via that. I believe the official blog post and announcements will come soon. Maybe it's already available as you're watching this video. Anyway, now, what is this model? Well, this is the Flash version of the 3 Pro model. This implies that it should be a bit less capable than that, but comes at a lower cost. It costs only 30 cents per million input tokens, and $2.50 and per million output tokens as well. They say that Gemini 3 Flash Preview is a low-latency model in the Gemini 3 family optimized for fast, high-throughput inference. It retains the core multimodal and reasoning capabilities of Gemini 3 while prioritizing responsiveness and execution efficiency. Built on the same architecture as Gemini 3 Pro, Gemini 3 Flash Preview supports native multimodal inputs, including text, images, and audio, and incorporates the improved reasoning and long context handling introduced in the Gemini 3 generation. It is designed for real-time and scalable workloads where latency and cost efficiency are primary considerations. It should be really good at multimodal workloads as usual. Gemini leads the pack in visual and multimodal tasks, and this seems to be great in that area as well. It is an always reasoning model similar to Gemini 3 Pro, but it has different reasoning budgets like high and so on. So, you can set that up as well if you want. It by default does the best reasoning on its own. Anyway, I don't have much to say about it apart from showing you guys my benchmarks. I have currently only run it on the non-agentic general questions benchmark. So, let's have a look. I have tested it with auto-reasoning, just like I have tested Gemini 3 Pro as well. Anyway, let's get into it. To start, we have the floor plan, and well, it's not very well made. You don't have any actual doors. The rooms don't make very much sense, and the table or whatever is in the middle. It's not a good generation. Just for comparison, I also have the Gemini 3 Pro option open here. It is an insane generation. You get things like lights, you can set the time of the day, and you can see the rooms. The room orientations and everything make sense. It doesn't have a door, but you get where the door might be, and you can see the lights and everything, which is quite good. Then we've got the SVG Panda with a burger, and it is insanely good. Like, it's really good. The SVGs that I hope for are ones where you can separate the hands and the burger, and they overlap and everything. It really nails this aspect. It's probably as good as Gemini 3 Pro in SVG generations. For context, this is the one by Gemini 3 Pro. I would still prefer the Gemini 3 Pro generation because it is more lifelike, if that makes sense, because there are shadows the burger is a bit more detailed, and so on. Then we've got the Pokeball in 3JS, and it is kind of good as well. Like, there's no issue in this generation. I'd prefer it over the Gemini 3 Pro generation. The Gemini 3 Pro has slightly broader black stripes, which are not very accurate. Gemini 3 Flash does indeed nail it. Then we have the chessboard with the autoplay feature, and well, it bombs in this one. It just doesn't work, and it doesn't work even with multiple regenerations, which is very sad to see, while Gemini 3 Pro obviously very much nails it. It has everything that you'd want. But let's move on to the Minecraft clone in 3JS, and it also bombs this one. It doesn't really work, and it's not a good generation. Then, we have the majestic butterfly flying in the garden, and it is kind of good in this. The butterfly looks pretty awesome. However, 
It moves in basically a circle instead of a full random physics-based motion. The colors are also kind of bland, but I still gave it an 18 in this because it's quite good. After this, we've got the CLI tool in Rust, and well, it doesn't really work in this, and the same also goes for the Blender script. The riddle is also a fail, and the same goes for the math question. One thing that I found very interesting is that for some reason, it wanted to make an HTML file for this question. And the answer to this riddle is smoke, but instead, it says that it's salt, which is very interesting. Anyway, this makes it score the 32nd position on the leaderboard, which is below Gemini 3 Pro, funnily enough, and it is also above GPT 5.2, which is a model that performs really badly in this benchmark. To be very honest, I do think that this benchmark doesn't tell you the whole story anymore, and that is why I have the agentic benchmarks as well. Unfortunately, I haven't yet been able to fully run it through the questions, and the full video about it should be out by tomorrow, but I have some observations about its agentic capabilities. So, it still struggles with the same Gemini problem. For example, if you don't know, then KiloCode gives a model multiple tools, and one tool is the multiple choice question, which makes it easy for the user to select between possible answers quickly without writing it manually. Now, generally, this is made for when the model is trying to propose a change, and there can be different ways to implement a change. Then, the model prompts the user to select between the options. So, if I send a hi message to the model, then it shouldn't give me three options because that tool can be used for it, but it isn't made for that. I hope that I'm making sense. This is a dead giveaway for me when I need to quickly test a model on the sense of tool calling, and it does indeed fail this specific test. It outputs a tool call for selecting multiple answers even if I say hi which means that it can do tool calling, but it isn't sensible with it, which is something that Gemini 2.5 Pro and even 3.0 Pro still struggle with. GLM 4.6 and Minimax have handled it insanely well. So, there's that. I do think that it is a good model, but the price is a bit high. I'll be comparing it to some other similarly priced models in tomorrow's video. So, please watch that. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!